Here we're going to look at a couple of examples involving Green's theorem. So before we get started, let's just recall what it is in the in general terms. So let's first suppose that C is a piecewise smooth, simple closed curve bounding a region D. So sometimes we say that the boundary of D is equal to C and we write this del D equals C. And then P and Q are two functions of two variables that have continuous first partials on an open set containing D. And, you know, we might want to put these together into a vector field in the following way. So F, F is a vector field with component functions P and Q. Then the line integral over C of P dx plus Q dy is the same thing as the double integral over the region D of partial Q, partial X minus partial P, partial Y. And then also notice that this guy over here is just the line integral of F dot dr where we've defined this F right here. And then this uh, partial Q, partial X minus partial P, partial Y is just the curl of F. It's this like curl of a two vector field. The curl of a three vector field is a slightly different definition. Okay, so the first example we want to look at is this one. So let's C be a right triangle with vertices. So we've got negative one, two, four, two, and four, five, and we're orienting that counterclockwise. And I should say here, this C has a positive orientation. So that means if you're walking along C, the region that it's bounding is to the left. Then we want to calculate this line integral. So the line integral over this triangle of sine x squared dx plus 3x minus y dy. Now we could set this up as a line integral and we would see that it's quite difficult to calculate. In fact, I think you get a non-elementary function to take an antiderivative of given that you have a sine x squared here. Um, so we'll actually just use the result of Green's theorem to put this into a double integral. So let's get an idea of what this picture looks like. So um, there's my xy plane. So I need the point negative 1, 2 on there. So that's going to be like right about here. And then I need my point 4, 2. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. So that's going to be right about there. And then 4, 5. So 3, 4, 5. So that's going to be right about up here. So. There is my curve C, which is oriented positively, which uh, makes the region on the inside D this thing right here. Okay, so what's nice about this is this is a horizontal line and this is a vertical line. So that's gonna make this setup of this double integral pretty simple. So notice this guy down here is the horizontal line, y equals 2. This guy right here is the vertical line, x equals 4. And then um, we can use the fact that this is the point 4, 5, and this is the point negative 1, 2 to easily find uh, like a point slope form of this line. So notice we need the slope first. So that slope is going to be the change in y divided by the change in x. So notice our change in y is 5 minus 2, so that's going to give us 3. Our change in x is 4 minus minus 1, so that's going to give us 5. So that makes our slope 3 fifths. The next thing that we can notice is that using the point slope form, we have y minus the y part of the point. Notice the y part of the point is 5, but I'm going to write that as 25 over 5 because I'm going to need like a fraction. Um, so that's going to be equal to 3 fifths and then x minus the x part of the point, which is 4. But now we can multiply that out. That is 3 fifths um, times x minus 12 over 5. Okay, good. But now uh, putting this all together, we'll get the equation of this line right here is given by um, y equals 3 fifths x uh, plus 13 over 5. Great. But now that allows us to write this region D as a type 1 region in a pretty easy way. So notice that D is going to be equal to all points x, y, where x is running between um, negative 1 and 4. So that's pretty easy to see. And then y is running be between 2, which is this horizontal line down here, and this slanted line up here. So that's 3 fifths x plus 13 over 5. 
good. Now what we can do is rewrite this uh, line integral as a double integral over d using Green's theorem where this sine of x squared is our function p and this thing 3x minus y is our function q. So we need partial q, partial x, but that's pretty easy. That's just 3 minus partial p, partial y, but notice partial p, partial y is 0 because there's no y's in there. Good. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase that and we have uh, this dA right here. Now the next thing that we can see is that this is 3 times the double integral over d dA. And now we can actually calculate this a couple of different ways. Um, the way I want to do it first is notice that this is exactly equal to 3 times the area of the region d because the double uh, integral of just dA over d is just the area of the region, but this is a right triangle um, and triangles have a well-known um, area formula. Notice this has base of 5 and it has height of 3, so this is uh, 3 times 1 half base height, so 1 half uh, base which is 5 times height which is 3, and so that's going to give us, let's see, 45 over 2. Which means that we wrote our region D kind of for no reason, but if you would rather do this as 3 times the integral from uh, negative 1 to 4, and then the integral from 2 to uh, 3 fifths x uh, plus 13 over 5 of uh, dy dx, that will provide you with the same number. Okay, good. I'm going to clean up the board and we're going to do another example. Okay, for our next example, we're going to find the area of an ellipse. So uh, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. And uh, calculating this as a double integral is actually quite hard. And, you know, let's maybe sketch out why that's the case. So notice an ellipse is going to have the following form. It's going to go through this point up here, uh, b, this point down here, negative b, here a, and negative a. And notice uh, we can maybe uh, write this top half of the ellipse as uh, y equals, so we can solve that for y, and let's see what we'll get. We'll get uh, b squared minus b squared x squared over a squared, the square root of that thing. And then uh, down here in the bottom half, we'll get the same thing but with a minus sign. And so I urge you to write down what the double integral for this area would be, but um, I will tell you that it will be pretty difficult to calculate and uh, maybe not worth it. So we're actually going to take a little bit different of an approach in order to do that. So um, I'll erase uh, this picture and then we'll get started with our other approach. Okay, so our other approach is to use Green's theorem. So uh, what we need to do is to notice that we have the area of D, where we'll call the ellipse D, is going to be equal to the double integral over uh, just DA. But now we can rewrite this as a line integral over C, where C is the boundary of D of PDX plus QDY, but there have to be very, very special choices of P and Q. In fact, what we need is partial Q, partial X minus partial P, partial Y equals 1 because we can apply Green's theorem to this right-hand side, and if uh, that difference of those partials equals 1, then uh, the left-hand side is exactly what we want. So, um, and then also notice that this is equal to the curl of F, where F is the vector field made by P and Q. So maybe uh, this builds a really important question, is what is a good choice for our vector field F, which is PQ. So just uh, to reiterate, what we want is uh, partial Q, partial X minus partial P, partial Y to be one, or in other words, the curl of F needs to be one. 
Okay, and so to answer this question, well, there are actually a lot of answers, but maybe a couple of the classic ones are the following. So we could take f to be equal to 0 comma x, because notice uh, what we get here is the curl of f is equal to the partial of x with respect to x, which is 1, minus uh, the partial of 0 with respect to 0, which is 0, so we get 1. So we get what we want. Or we could take f to be equal to negative y comma 0, but that's going to give you the same curl because notice here we've got a built-in minus sign, so partial p partial y in this case will be negative 1, um, but we're subtracting it, so we have 0 minus negative 1, so that'll give you 1. Or we could look at like a symmetrized version of this. Um, and what I mean by that is we could take minus y over 2 and then x over 2. But now if we uh, calculate the curl in this case, we will get 1 half minus negative 1 half, which is equal to 1. And that's easy to check. The partial of this guy with respect to x is half. The partial of this guy with respect to x is negative half. You put those in there, 1 minus negative half is 1. And in fact, this is the right version, um, and I'll let you guys maybe like play around with these versions, and if you do that, you see you'll get something that is definitely solvable, but it's easier to do with the one that I've uh, squared in blue. Okay, so um, I'm going to clean up the board, and then we're going to proceed with this. Okay, on the previous board, we argued via Green's theorem that we can take the area of a region D, which is the double integral of dA over D, and write that as one half uh, the line integral over C of minus Y dx plus X dy, where C is the boundary of D. And uh, I've taken this one half out of the line integral kind of just to make it a little bit simpler. Now, the next thing we want to do is uh, parameterize the ellipse. And I won't labor this too much because we've done this uh, much previously when we were looking at um, calculus of like vector functions and uh, parametric equations and stuff like that. But what works is we'll take R of T to be equal to A cos T uh, B sine T. And here T needs to run from 0 to 2 pi in order to draw the entire ellipse. So let's just check that real quick. Notice if we plug this in for x and this in for y into our equation of our ellipse, we get um, a squared cos squared over a squared um, plus b squared sine squared over b squared. But the a squareds and the b squareds cancel, which means that this uh, turns into 1. And so these do satisfy the equation of the ellipse. And now, the next thing that I want to uh, want to notice is that these portions of the line integral, dx dy, uh, can be written using the following rule. So dx is dx dt dt, and likewise, dy is dy dt dt. So just recall that from when we were calculating um, line integrals for their own sake. Okay, great. Now we're ready to go ahead and calculate this. Notice this is going to be 1 half the integral from 0 to 2 pi, and then we have minus our y component, so that's going to be b sine t, and then we have our dx component. So notice our dx component will be the derivative of a cosine t. So that's going to be minus a sine t. So just to point this out, this is our y, and this is dx dt. I'm going to factor uh, dt out of the whole right-hand side, so let's hold off on that. And now we're going to add to this x, but notice x is a cosine t from this term right here, and then dy, but that is going to involve dy dt, which is going to be a b cosine t. And then finally, we need to take a dt out of the whole thing. So I'll do that this way. Okay, great. So uh, just I want to point this out. This is our x, and this is our dy dt. So we've taken all the components up there.
Now notice I can bring this half down, this integral uh, from zero to two pi down. If we multiply these two together, we get a b sine squared t, um, and then plus a b cosine squared t dt. But notice we can factor an a b out of that. We get a b over two, and then we're left with uh, cosine squared plus sine squared. But cosine squared plus sine squared is just one, so we get the integral from zero to two pi. But now of dt. But now that integral from 0 to 2 pi of just dt is going to be 2 pi. So that gives us our final answer of a times b times pi. So we've got our area of an ellipse via Green's theorem through calculating the line integral. Okay, this is a good place to end this video.